Following months of negotiations, the Nigerian government last Friday agreed to exclude members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASO, from the Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System, IPS, raising hopes that the university lecturers will end their eight-month-long strike. The government also agreed to pay the lecturers their outstanding salaries using an older payment platform the government integrated financial and management information system. ASU, which was offered $65 billion, is seeking to address the issue of earned allowances and revitalization of universities with the funds. Meanwhile, they approved visitation panels to oversee the activities of all federal universities in the country. We'll be inaugurated this week and are expected to conclude their assignments on or before December 31st, 2020. With some glimmer of hope in the horizon that universities may be reopened soon, however, the big question that continues to linger is, will the most recent agreement reached with the lecturers be enough to appease them, given their penchant for embarking on strikes at the slightest drop of a hat? Well, here to discuss all this and the need for wholesale reforms of the Nigerian university system is the Minister of Labor and Employment and former Governor of Anambra State, Senator Chris Ngige. Welcome to the show, Senator Ngige, and thank you for joining us. Tha thank you, Ruben. Thank you very <laughs> yes, much. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Senator. Well, very quickly, um, the newspaper has reported first that uh, a truce has been reached with uh, ASU, and that government has agreed uh, to take ASU out of uh, IPs, and that certain other agreements have been reached. But, you know, there was also a story attributed to you uh, that you said the report of the meeting uh, held with ASU on Friday uh, was taken somewhat out of context. And that it's not true that the uh, government has already uh, acceded to uh, uh, ASU's request that it is a UTAS or nothing. What exactly is a true story? Well, uh, the true story can be... Uh, seen from uh, the communique or the offer let, uh, given to ASU uh, is in black and white. We, we wrote it. And uh, it's important uh, everybody realize that uh, for the purposes of this uh, dispute, I'm just a reconciliator or conciliator. But being a part of government, I always know what government offer is. Uh -huh. I am not uh, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, neither am I the Accountant General of the Federation. Uh, the Accountant General of the Federation, public servant, he doesn't speak. Uh -huh. So I actually say what government had offered. That doesn't mean I have taken side or uh, uh, like uh, the president of us who described me in one of his uh, interviews, he said uh, that I have relinquished the job of a conciliator to be a conspirator. I took it to be a joke anyway. But the true position is, number one, prior to the Friday meeting, government gave us an offer of 30 billion for, for end allowances in the universities for all the unions, 20 billion for revitalization fund to show government good faith that we are still part of the, whatever MOU you reached with government in 2013. So aggregately, the money is 50 billion. Now at the Friday meeting, Positions were shifted because, as you said, they had shifted from their demand of uh, 220 billion mm -hmm. to 50 percent of it, which is 110 billion. At the last meeting, the government side said we don't have this kind of money to give. But at the meeting of Friday, 
what government has offered, and which is what ASU is taking back to their people, is number one, we have two compartments of offer on revitalization and end allowances. These two compartments are A, compartment A, that uh, 25 billion, up from 20 billion for revitalization and 40 billion for end allowances for all the unions, make it, making an aggregate sum of 65 billion. That's compartment A. Compartment B, we can raise the revitalization up to 30 billion, and then the, uh, the end allowances will drop to 35. Again, you have 65. So they have a choice to make. They, they now say they will have to take it back to their uh, organs for them to decide. We had uh, earlier on trashed the issue of uh, the committee on renegotiation. Government side presented uh, their letters of uh, appointment to, to those involved. ASU was satisfied. Visitation panel. Government also said they will publish the names of the visitation panel members, which have been approved by Mr. President, so that the people can uh, start preparation for their visitation, which is supposed to terminate in de uh, December 31. Visitation panels are panels put up by the visitor to the universities, who is the president of the nation for all the federal universities, and they are there to check what has transpired in those universities for the last 10 years. So they are doing a work of five years uh, first stanza and another five years Second stanza, starting from 2010, ASU is satisfied, the publication will come. Uh, the area of UTAS and IP payment, I take it holistic, or I take the paripasu. At UTAS is the University Transparent uh, Solution uh, Platform. Which, uh, yes, uh -huh. which uh, ASU said their scientists have developed. They have developed the software. Government have given approval to NIDA, which is the technology agency in charge of uh, government uh, uh, softwares and everything on, on information technology. So they have started the process. ASU had uh, given uh, them uh, this, the, the materials they needed. Also, te, uh, techni uh, technologists have met with uh, the people in NIDA, and by the close of uh, work that Thursday, also reported that they are satisfied with the progress being made. NIDA has given me a preliminary report. I'm expanding this uh, secondary report or final report. We are all satisfied. Now, what we are saying now, there's a problem. Within the transition period, all these end allowances we are talking about, how do we pay it? The salaries you're asking us to lift embargo on, because their salaries were embargoed after June, when they refused to go back to work. There's a law of no work, no pay, Section 43 of Industrial Dispute Act and even by ILO principles at work. If you are not working, you don't receive any uh, compensation from your employer. Uh -huh. So these, these are known uh, laws and uh, principles and conventions of the ILO. So we assured ASU, because they made a request, that they be paid those money. And we told them there is a, a law like this. And this law has caught up with you. They now pledged to the meeting that they are unlike medical doctors and nurses who, when they go on strike, people lose their lives. And you can't bring back life anymore. That they will teach extra periods, day and night, to make sure that nobody loses any semester for their students. So, so that's their pledge. Based on that pledge, we say to them, we will now take your pledge 
and your assertion to a higher authority for us to get the relevant approval between Ministry of Labor and Ministry of Education for these uh, withheld salaries to be released. So that's where we are on that. But if, you, if the approval is gotten, how again do we pay you? Because you are not on IPs and you refuse to go. Only a section of your members are on IPs. So we now agree that for those people who have not been captured on IPs, because a lot of them are on IPs, a lot are on IPs, who are not on IPs, there was a method which the accountant general used to pay them the compassionate uh, payments during the COVID period. The president approved their compassionate payment of uh, two, three months, but even at that, they were paid from that uh, February into June. They had worked in February, so it's not part of it. So March, April, May, June, those four months were compassionate. So, Akantanjara said, we had to do a hybrid into NIMSI, NIMSI portal, and then that's what we used to pay. So the meeting agreed, you use this same method and pay them for the period of the transition when the UTAS is undergoing integrity tests at NIDA and the cyber security tests in the Office of National Security Advisor. So these are the major issues. So the screaming headlines like, oh, government uh, has uh, abandoned uh, IPs is not entirely correct. Because there is no payment uh, module now in, a, in existence in, in the government system that will not have a handshake with IPs. Mm. Well, Senator, I mean, thank you very much for these uh, clarifications. But you quoted uh, Professor Biodun Guyemi saying that you are a conspirator, not a conciliator. He, in fact, went a step further to say that, as far as ASU is concerned, that you are playing hide and seek game with uh, Utahs. And his argument is that he shouldn't take NIDA up to six or eight weeks to be able to resolve whatever they want to do in terms of testing the integrity of Utahs. That's one. The 65 billion uh, uh, naira. Um, how will it be shared? Because, or is it strictly for ASU alone? Because there are other members, other unions within the university system, SANU, uh, uh, yes. NASU, and uh, NAIT, who are also saying that they have issues in terms of allowances. And it doesn't look like ASU is ready to share, yeah. particularly with regard to uh, uh, and allowances. Uh, Hello? Senator, did you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, and the last like. stanza of your word is, uh, I lost you. No, I was asking the second part of it about whether there is a sharing template uh, for the uh, revitalization fund and the hand allowances among the various unions within the university system. Because as you is saying, that uh, it, it probably cannot share with uh, SANU, NASU, and uh, other unions. I, is there a separate arrangement for these other unions who have also raised concerns about unpaid allowances? Uh, Ruben, His Excellency Ruben, I'll call you His Excellency. <laughs> uh, because you, you will have been deputy governor in Ogun State now. <laughs> <laughs> if, if God has supported it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. This is not the first time uh, they, are, they, are, they are sharing revitalization university by university and end allowances between us. <laughs> Ruben is still laughing because I call him his excellency. <laughs> Ru Ruben, we pray to God, you get there, don't worry. I came it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so this is not the first time. And uh, luckily, uh, like I told you again, ASU did not contest the issue of sharing again with their brothers in the university system. B because the issue is clear. If uh, they don't share with them, because those other people have uh, allowances that are due to them. We had an episode in the first uh, 2017 experience. We gave them 20 billion, and ASU, I think, took about 18 billion while this other group were on strike. So by the time they rushed back from their strike, 
there was no money left. I, I, I think only two billion left on the 20 billion. So government had to give an additional five billion. And uh, later on, uh, when we discovered again that Nsoka, Elori, where uh, the lecturer did not participate in, in, in the strike with ASU, and ASU excluded them from the, from the sharing, we made additional three billion uh, available so that you don't punish those who have gone to work. So altogether, we had 28 billion that year. So, but that taught the uh, National University Commission and the Ministry of Education a big lesson. So they, they put up a template for sharing. So that template is there. So even if you give them 10 naira now, there's a template for sharing it. Well, on, uh, so you don't worry about that one. Well, then the other aspect of uh, the leg of the Utah's, question. Utah's, yes. Utah's. I am not a computer scientist. I'm not a, a guru. I will only rely on what uh, these experts in NIDA tells me or writes to me. The same thing they are writing to me, they will copy it to ASU, they will copy education, they will copy Accountant General of the Federation. But as the, as, uh, the conciliator, like I've told you, we have uh, Accountant General who doesn't talk to the press, we have a Minister of Finance who is very, very, very busy with the economy, budget, and uh, talking with the, uh, our creditors and those who are helping us uh, fund the budget. And so it's very embroiled in so many bilateral meetings on finance. So it is me who even say what the government side situation is. Education ministry, a lot of them, that the direct employers of us, but they, they, they run away because of the way the discussions go with ASU. A lot of the time, the discussions sometimes go very abrasive and uh, pugilistic and pugnacious. So not many people like to discuss. But it's my job. I won't run away from it. It's my, if I, uh, and more importantly, much more importantly, Ruben, I have children in public school, biological, three, three. They're in public school, they're not in private universities. Like, uh, unlike ASU members, most of their children are in private universities. Mine are here, three. Those I put on scholarship, about 15 of them. So I'm a very big stakeholder. In the public school system, the tertiary public school system, I am. So when I to say, oh, politicians have taken their children abroad, that's why they don't care. Chris in Gige cares because my children are not uh, abroad, even though they, are, they have dual nationality. Two of them are American citizens. They can be in America. Uh, but I, I, I choose them to be here with me. Well, Senator, uh, did so you get an impression? Point. So Asu, Asu cannot accuse me of, being, of not being nationalistic enough. So anything that will help the university system here, I'm in the forefront. I like UTAS because if UTAS works, it's a homegrown technology, it's a homegrown thing. And that helps uh, 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 presidential order three and uh, five. And we will save our foreign exchange. Because it's a homegrown thing. So, so uh, let our uh, super president not call me a conspirator. I'm, I'm more nationalistic about national, the public university than even him and his members. I am. Well, Senator, uh, let's talk about the revitalization fund. You've increased uh, what you have offered the uh, ASU. Uh, did you get an impression that they are impressed? Because yeah. the original argument is that in the 2030 Memorandum of Understanding, what was agreed with the federal government was a sum of 1.3 trillion naira over a period of uh, six years. And that actually is supposed to be given 220 Correct. billion per annum. And now they are being offered uh, just uh, what Correct. looks like a token. Do you think they will accept it? Uh, 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 Ruben, they will accept. Two reasons. Number one, they know that on also the panel, on this panel, 
did this assessment in 2009. 2009, they, it could not be, 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 be taken off the ground by the government of the day. Of the day. In 2013, it was renegotiated by the Jonathan N government. And the Jonathan government said, OK, under pressure, they accepted 1.3 trillion. They couldn't pay. They were pressurized to pay. They, they, they paid the uh, 200 billion. So you now have 1.1 billion left, spread over five years, and that comes to 20, 220 billion per year. They didn't pay anything in 2014. They didn't pay anything in 2015. Even though oil, our main state, the mainstay of our economy, was selling at a 100, 120 billion a barrel. And we are producing uh, 2.5 million barrels per day. But today, or since 2015 that this government came in, the militancy in the Niger Delta dropped our production from 2.2 billion to 2, billion from, uh, 2 million barrels per day, from 2 million barrels per day to 1.5, 1 million, and at a 0.700 uh, 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 barrels a day. The price moved from 120, 180, 70, and in that hour, 2015 to 2016, $40 a barrel, 35, 30, and Nigeria went into recession. Because that was the mainstay of the economy, mono economy. So this government has said, we don't want to say that we are uh, opting out of this agreement or memorandum of understanding, because that's an MOU they have. And by ILO principles, at, uh, employer employee relationship, any collective bargaining agreement can be renegotiated. Especially where you renegotiate it based on the capacity or ability to pay. But the government says we need this thing because we need the university's system to be funded. So we now agree with ASU put up a NIS committee. There are members of the NIS committee. That NIS committee have given sources of uh, funding, possible sources of funding. Those sources of funding were taken to uh, government. And government saw that a lot of the sources of funding mentioned there were not implementable. For example, we have VAT there. 80% or 85% of VAT collection goes to the states. It's only 15% that reside with the federal government. There, there, there is a stamp duty there. Stamp duty is not collectible uh, uh, by education or uh, any other person, except with the relevant agencies that, that collect them, FIRS. Up to now, that is not even being cleared. So these two sources of funding that ASU prescribed, in all honesty, which government says we can do, it was not possible for education to push it through, the Ministry of Education. So the NIS committee that is still in existence put up another uh, validation workshop and they are, they are still at work. We need them to get possible sources of funding, major of which now is the private sector. Government alone cannot sustain the tertiary education system or even education system in Nigeria. Do not also forget, uh, Ruben, that education is on the concurrent list. So even if uh, 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 the federal government has not been doing enough, how about the state government? Even their state universities are in what state? That is why ASU raised the issue of state universities and proliferation. In the committee, we agreed in the negotiating table that the NUC Act has to be amended. And the committee have been set in place and are working on it. ASU has membership in that committee so that we can stem the proliferation. You have uh, places like Ondo State having two universities. Why don't you take one only and fund? We have uh, 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 Oyo and uh, Oshun quarreling over this other. So, there are so many people that are doing the university system for prestige sake. It should stop. But Senator, is the uh, federal government in a position to dictate to state uh, governments uh, the number of universities or tertiary institutions that they can set up in a federal we system? Are, we are not. We are not. 
No, we are not. It's on concurrent list. But the, but the NUC, the NUC that registers universities and can remove uh, accreditation is in a position to do so, to maintain quality. Well, the um, ASU leadership, after the uh, offers uh, from the federal government, said that they will consult with their various unions and members and that they will get back to uh, the federal government yes. by next week, Friday. That's this week, Friday. Uh, are you optimistic that uh, they will accept uh, the offers? Or, and if they do not, what options are available to the federal government? Because you've been quoted as saying you will explore other channels, including invoking relevant sections of the labor law. Well, there are professors there. They, they read the labor laws. They know what the labor laws say. They are intelligent persons. They are intelligent men. Uh, and uh, I'm, not an, uh, I'm not a pessimist. I feel that even this offer they got is one of the best they have ever gotten since I started the uh, uh, conciliation on that beat in the ministry. So for me, I do not see why they should not accept it. Everything they ask for have been, have been granted. Uh, if it is uh, the quantum of money, it's work in progress. Uh, it's, uh, so I don't uh, think they, they should... Uh, say the offer is not good. But besides, I, I told them before they left that asking the nation, asking your students to wait from Friday to Friday is not fair, it's unfair. Uh, they, should, uh, they should come back to us by Tuesday. They have done that before. Uh, when we went to the Senate and uh, negotiated and discussed with the Senate president, the offer was made to them on a Thursday. They came back to us on a Tuesday. So that's what I expect them to do this time around. And if they do so this time around, the nation will uh, appreciate them. The nation, the nation will regard them as a patriotic uh, citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So I, I expect them to get back to me much earlier than, than uh, Friday. I expect them uh, to start uh, talking to me by Tuesday. That's what I told them at the, at the table. But even with all of this, the federal government is being accused of uh, adopting divide and rule tactics. Um, it was said, for example, that you met with the Congress of Nigeria University uh, Academics, uh, KONWA, and that the attempt, uh, you know, the plan is to register an alternate uh, body uh, that uh, federal government can be uh, relating with. Uh, how much of a truth is, uh, is in this? And uh, is that really a divide and rule tactics? Fight us soon create another body? Uh, no, Ruben, it's not a divide and rule tactics. Uh, anybody who knows me, uh, they know me that I'm a man of uh, law and order. Uh, the president we have now, too, is a man who sticks to the constitution. He would, uh, he, 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 the constitution is the supreme law of the land. And even the uh, laws flowing out from the constitution, like uh, acts of national assembly, Mr. President, sticks to them religiously. In fact, if he's uh, in, in doubt, he will refer the matter to the Attorney General of the Federation for advice. You'll be surprised. Very little things, and once law is involved, he will refer it to the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. So for me, the, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Section 40 of that Constitution gives us right to free assemble, free association of individuals to the extent that you can form one political parties that will be subject to registration by uh, INEC, two, you can form trade unions of workers to the extent that the registry of trade unions in the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment will register that trade union. It's there. That's what the Section 40 is all about. So this group of people had applied since two years, since 2018, and said, we are not members of ASU. We are lecturers in the university system. We have gathered ourselves together. We want you to register and recognize us to, as a trade union. By the way, ASU is a trade union. It's registered as a trade union in my place. 
and is affiliated to the Nigerian Labour Congress. There is voluntarism in unionship. The principle of voluntarism, by ILO. You go where, where you think you want to be. You can even opt not to be in any union. It's allowed. It's just like Nigerians, Nigerian population, not everybody wants to be a member of a political party. It's me and you, uh, Ruben. I, I opted for APC. You opted for PDP. Um, me and you, we now go to INEC on that pedestal, on the platform. So these people said, we are not members of us. Give us our own union. I did the right thing. 2019, I put up a committee to look into their request. That committee was working till I left government in, 20, in, in, in that same uh, 2019. This 2020, they have come and visited the ministry, interacted with the committee, but before the COVID, even before this uh, ASU strike and ASU Palava, they had come. So, it, I have now given the committee a marching order because they have been going backward and forward. They formed a subcommittee of, uh, of that committee and they are well, uh, working and waiting for their reports to be collated. I said now that I need the reports in four weeks. That's what I've done. So I don't know why you would call it divide and rule. Let me see what, they are, what they've advised me. Well, uh, Senator... I will not do anything that is outside the, uh, the framework of the law. Well, talking about the law, uh, one of the major issues uh, that the ASU is talking about is that university autonomy is what they are fighting for. And uh, there is uh, a University Autonomy Act 2007. And uh, for the federal government to even contemplate IPs at all is a violation of that uh, uh, enabling law. What do you say to that? Ruben, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, law, law, according to Chief Williams, Chief Ruti B. Williams, who is the doyen of law in Nigeria, is 99% common sense. And uh, we, when you're applying the law, you don't, you, don't, you don't apply it in such a way that uh, the society is destabilized. That's why the judges in court will give you some judgments, which they say is judgment given to preserve the integrity of society. <laughs> so, ASU is quoting that particular aspect. And they are doing it especially when it suits them. There is a, 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 a man called Babalaki who was a chairman of the University of Lagos. He was chairman governing council. The law you are quoting, that the ASU people are quoting, says that the governing council can, remove, can appoint and remove a vice chancellor. The supreme law of the land in 171 gives the president the powers to appoint and remove vice chancellors. So you, you cannot see what I'm saying. So the, 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 the flow, outflow from the Constitution is the act which uh, you and Asu have quoted now. But the bigger law, the enveloping law, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Section 171, gives that same president the power to remove the vice chancellor without recourse to anybody. Yes. Because the vice chancellor formed under the category of people called chief executives of federal paraceta, federal agencies, and federal institutions. I don't know whether you are with me. So this other law on autonomy, again for the council, was done in a way that the council will generate the fund and money and be uh, less dependent on the government and their government budget and generate money and pay they are workers, just like it's done overseas. Are they paying their workers today? The answer is no. They are not paying the lecturers. 
That is why the accountant general and minister of finance became a player in this matter. If I sue, I have uh, done a, a, a community development with their councils and have generated enough money to pay everybody working in that system transparently and uh, equitably and fairly, the Ministry of Education and the Accountant General Office won't even see them. They won't even you know what, what is called IPs and no IPs. But the man in the Accountant General Office and Minister of Finance managing the entire economy says we are losing a lot of money by taking money from our federal budget and going to pay in the universities. There are good workers in the universities. People who are not, not, are not working, they are named in the payroll. There is duplication in payment. There are uh, lecturers who teach in five universities. We want to introduce a system that will stop them from doing that. There are people uh, uh, in library and the other places who are non-academic staff. They are taking monies for allowances that are not approved by national salaries and incomes and wages. And that is why we have this humongous uh, uh, personnel uh, budget and bill. We want to stop it. We are introducing this system for all public servants in Nigeria. That's, that's how it came. Otherwise, if the universities were generating their own money and paying themselves, nobody will be talking to them about IPs and no IPs. So for me, for me, I think uh, uh, it's a question of uh, uh, six as a number and half a dozen. Well, on that note. The governing council, as members are talking about, are appointed by Mr. President and can be dissolved by Mr. President without recourse to anybody. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Senator Chris Ngige, uh, Nigeria's Minister of Labor and Employment. Thank you for joining us on This Day Live. Mm -hmm.